been arranging trucks around to where we got Stevie's been done with the din din for a while. Junkie should be about done if he ain't done skidding. And then Mama's got me, Derek, and maybe one more load of uh, logs to load. Alright, let's take our little drone flight here to cover this property, probably about 20 acres. Uh, I'm going to try to not get the landowners out. Some of these landowners, uh, I like to get some drone footage of these jobs because it does so good for my vision. But one thing I want to make sure not do is cover the landowner's house if they live on the property. Or disclose the location of their property for privacy reasons. So I don't get my butt in trouble. So all I cover with this is the jobs we're doing. You see the power line where Stevie's Den Den is? There to the left. That's where them funky waggle trees was. Junkyard's honing down to about less than, I think, six drags to bring to Big Mama. So Big Daddy's starting to work on the main skid road with that with the dozer. Um, there was pockets of this that was cut hard because it was done poplar. <coughs> Excuse me. Some of this was selective, but a lot of it was cut pretty hard because of the, where the poplar was. Um, and some, there was a couple spots with some white oak that was done up towards the top of the hill and some red oak. And there were some old, this, this is like the second cutting on this acreage. Somebody's come through and cut it, oh, probably 15 years ago, 10, 15 years ago. Uh, so it had some holes in it and then we made a little thinner and I don't know how I'm not a forester so I don't know how this management plan works out after this because there's some spots that looks to me like it's too thin I'm afraid almost some of the trees will wolf out but I don't know that I don't I'm not a forester up there in that corner that's where I left the tree up there somewhere to the left up there and this is the back property line you're looking at back here. You can see where I stopped cutting, where the activity stopped. It's just kind of a long, narrow, it's kind of more narrow than anything. See, some of them trees, I don't know, you never understand. The foresters, they're educated. So you never understand what they're thinking if you're not educated. So, some areas it looks to me like, you know, like a few of the trees might be off too much by themselves but I'm sure there's a good management plan to that. So it's hard to sit there and question what a forester's doing if you're not educated like he is to start with, you know, cause they're, they're studying the habitat. They, they're, it, that's in the back of their head, just like skid roads and drainages and stuff's in the back of our head, you know. But, uh, you know, so they're, they're looking at it species by species. But, and you see some of the green shorter trees there their trees coming back from the last logging job. So they're growing up through it. So there might be some shade tolerant type of species or whatever, I didn't look good enough. So to whether this type of harvest is gonna benefit them trees coming back too, you know, so. But I don't know, I mean, I, I'm not, I'm not, I wasn't up on, I wasn't paying attention, was busy trying to cut trees. And here we're heading back to the yard. Now, Stevie got his din, din rack there because originally we weren't going to bring the boom in. Stevie was going to yard all this. Derek was going to cut it with the rubber tire cutter. And Stevie's going to yard this. But what turns out is we only had this two-day window, so we brought everybody in, guns a-blazing, to get it in, get it cleaned out. Now, look at that mess around the knuckle boom. That's uh, a lot of poplar bark and stuff. Poplar's really shedding and peeling. Um, but that's their lane and their yard. So when we get done, we're gonna get all that mess off there. But I want you to see how messy it looks right now. Because later on in the video, when I'm showing us cleaning it up, then you can start seeing 
then it makes sense you know what we're doing later and up the barrel out there out there at that barrel you're seeing up in front of blackie that's a uh water meter under the ground there so it's kind of tight getting in and out and like i said it's a small job we hammered it out in two days uh brutus cut it in one day and then we uh got it hauled out and all, all our equipment moved out every piece of machinery was moved out the second day big daddy i got footage i got messed up that i was going to show you when i the last machine to leave was big daddy's dozer and i actually hauled it with blackie and when i got in it was just getting decently dark so i mean we just cut her by the skin of her teeth and this is my first load of logs after working on his stuff back at the mill that morning uh this was covering out. I think I showed that on the last video. This is actually drone footage covering a load of logs I hauled on the last video. But I want you to see how the skid road looks down there. See all the dirt and mud piled up? We finish it all. <laughs> oh, God. I got Dolly Parton's load of mini collars. Red box pulp wood. The second and last box, two feet of pulp wood. Then Stevie's rack. And then logs on top of it. And no, I'm not over. I guarantee I'm not over. But I got a little bit of everything. Now the reason I've done that is because of the logs that are left, I want to make tag on sure we ain't overloading Larry to get them out. And it should be good. Bob was like hauling crackers. Just a load of tag on crackers. We'll get the meal, jump this trailer, buzz back with a low boy. He's down there loading uh, the uh, green skitter, junkyard skitter. show what we do as far as what we do on the land and it's all about the land so i don't know and i've been getting some hate comments lately about loggers being murderers to the you know this is our livelihoods i don't know why they would think we're haphazard about what we do on the land 